Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my vintage board game collection. I guess technically they're not all vintage, but most of them are vintage and I try to find replacements for the more modern games I have, if that makes sense. Originally, I just filmed this and I was talking, but Jimmy could hear me talking, who's my neighbor's cat, and decided that he was going to desperately try to get in and obviously I can't let him in. So he proceeded to meow during the whole time I was trying to film, so I just figured I would record a voiceover instead of using the original audio. So we love him, but. So we just keep them all on a bookshelf in our basement and on the very top, we have some like Nintendo themed ones, which these obviously aren't vintage, but John is a like video game collector so he found these at thrift stores and thought they were cool to display on the top because he has a big display of his games and stuff in the basement so then the kind of first shelf i guess has a bunch most of the ones i would say we have are from the 60s and 70s personally i find those ones to look the coolest but this top one here, Careers, is actually our favorite board game ever, but we had never heard of it or played it until we found this vintage one, which is cool. I think it's just the perfect combination of strategy, but also luck. So it just makes for an interesting game. Um, I believe this game originated in the 1950s, but I could be wrong about that. But I believe this copy we have is from the early 1970s. It definitely has that 70s look to it. Um, but it was in really, really great condition. It came like the board was in amazing condition, came with the instructions, came with, um, you know, all the pieces there. The only thing was the like note card things that you keep um, track of your score and stuff on. There was just one left in there, I think. I ended up just like whiting out the parts and like photocopying it so that we could have additional ones. But we love playing this game. This is definitely like the most played game I think that we own and I'm happy that we found it. I believe that they might still make this or they were still making it like up until the 90s. Then we have Go For Broke, which I believe is also early 1970s, and Payday, which I believe they still make Payday to this day, I'm not sure though. And then we have Gambler, which is another early 1970s board game. I've never heard of this game before until we found it, but it definitely has that 1970s aesthetic, and it was in really good condition as well with the instructions there and all the pieces, I believe. Um, I definitely enjoy this game, but I think it would probably be funner if I had more than two people playing because that's the thing that it's mostly just John and I playing when we are playing games, but it's still fun. I'm not going to show you all of the games up close, but I just picked a few that I thought might be interesting to some people. Um, a lot of the games we have are like really common that probably everyone's played before, but this game I'd never heard of and so I don't know if they still make it or not. I feel like board games have kind of been like a dying thing for a while now in this day and age. So then we have Trust Me, which is also 1970s, I believe. Although it's possible that this one is like early 1980s. In any case, it definitely has that like 70s, early 80s aesthetic. Another one that came in great condition, another one we had never heard of before, so uh, I'm not certain they still make it, but this one's pretty fun too. I feel like it, again, would probably be funner if you had more than two people playing, but I will say this is probably one of my, more like, one of the ones that I like the most that we've found. If I'm remembering correctly, because we have so many different games, I believe this one is like, you like have to buy stocks or like something of that nature. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing a horrible job explaining this. <laughs> then we have a 1970s version of Game of Life. We had a more modern one, but then we found that vintage one 
And then this is the French game that I found recently. We haven't had a chance to play it yet. I think I showed it in one of my recent hauls. And then this I Love Lucy game, which was from like 99 or 97, I think. We actually haven't had a chance to play that one either, but I showed that in one of my hauls as well. John actually found that uh, while he was out thrifting one day and brought it home, so it's cool. This Wide World game is pretty fun. I believe that this one is a late 60s version. Again, I had never heard of this game either until we found it. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned or not, but all of these board games were thrifted at thrift stores for probably a maximum of $6 maybe, but I feel like we find most of them for three or four dollars. And considering the condition they're in, I think it's pretty cool. This game was fun to play. I think, again, it might be funner if you had a couple more people, but it was just a very different game. You do all these things with like coordinates and you move this, I think I showed it, it's like a clear grid that you move around the, I don't know, it was just, it was very different and unique. Never heard of it, so I don't know if they still make it or not but I definitely feel like it has that 60s aesthetic. This Hannibal game is a fairly recent find and I don't remember if we played it or not. I can't remember, so I can't say much about it. This Trust Me game is a lot of fun. Then we have this, uh, the Inventors game, which I can't actually remember if we've tried this one or not before. Uh, I feel like we've probably got it within the last year or so. Um, but it definitely has like a 70s aesthetic to it and it looks, I remember it looking really cool, but I, I can't remember playing it, but it's possible we have. We go in and out of phases of playing board games, definitely play a lot more like during winter time. So they're great when the power goes out, which happened to us a lot this last winter. But this was another example of finding a game for just a few dollars and like from the 70s so I mean like 50 years old and it still has all the parts and everything's in good condition still has the instructions so it's pretty cool if you ever get a game that doesn't have the instructions though you can usually go online and find them pretty easily so we have a 70s version of Clue which is one of my favorite games from childhood and then a game called Rough House, which I'm not sure if we've had a chance to play that one or not either, but I'm pretty sure that's like very 70s. And then I just recently found this Percheesy, and this one was a little bit more expensive than I would normally pay. I think it was like $6, but I had been wanting the game Percheesy for a long time. I feel like anytime I see that game, I just instantly think of the 70s. And then we have a crib board, which John really loves playing crib. I should probably play it with him more often because I know he likes it so much, but I'm kind of like meh about it. But I believe the one that we have is like a 70s or maybe early 80s version. And we have this game called Stratego, which John really likes that game. I've never heard of it before and we actually haven't played it yet either. But I'm sure he probably wants to, so maybe we should do that soon. And then we've got this Hangman game, which that's just like the game Hangman. I don't think we've ever played it or anything, but I just thought it was cool looking because it has that 70s aesthetic. And then there's this game called Admirals, which we haven't played yet, but I think that it might actually just be like an early version of the game Battleship, just reading it. It seems like it's pretty much the same thing, but I could be wrong about that because I haven't actually played it yet. And then we also have a 70s edition of Risk up there. And then we've got good old Password. I feel like this is probably from the 60s. Um, I used to watch this on TV all the time, like on the Game Show Network when they would play old game shows. Uh, I loved that so much. I don't know if the Game Show Network still exists or not, but that was my jam. And then we've got Ramoli, which we actually used to play a lot in my family growing up with pennies. Um, and then I found an old copy of snakes and ladders from forever ago and then this scrabble is actually just from the 90s but what makes it special is that it's actually like john's childhood scrabble uh game his mom and dad gave it to us like quite a few years ago now but when we opened it up it still had like their scorecards and stuff inside from like the last time they played as a family which was so cute so um i don't know it's just it feels more special than finding like a 70s version to replace it 
So then we have a bunch of Monopoly. So Monopoly was formerly our favorite board game until we discovered careers, but we still have a, a great deal of love for Monopoly. We both played it a ton as kids. So I feel like that the nostalgia of it is probably um, part of it. And we like John, myself and a bunch of our friends, we used to have big Monopoly games at our house all the time, like years ago, but it was, really fun we still like joke about it and laugh about it sometimes because the stuff we would do there was usually alcohol involved during these games as well so you can imagine so we currently have a monopoly uh german edition uh we have a nightmare before christmas and we have a regular copy from the 60s but then we have this other copy that's like the UK edition from the 60s I think it's just really neat we actually found this at a yard sale I feel like probably like a decade ago for maybe one or two dollars it didn't come in a box it just had the board and then all of the pieces in this box but all of that is the same and the board basically looks the same but all of the property names are different and you can tell it's like a like older version because normally there's the I forget what his name is but you know the little Monopoly guy he's usually in the middle of the board there um, our, our regular copy of Monopoly too I believe is from the 60s but I don't know I just think it's neat so sometimes we play this um, this version And then lastly, we just have the Canadian version of Monopoly, which I don't think we've ever played. And for some reason, the the box is like so much larger than any other board game. I have no idea why, but. And then down on the very bottom, we just have a bunch of random games and things like Skippo, which is a card game. I don't know if I've ever played it before. And we've got Dominoes, which I've never actually played Dominoes like the way you're supposed to play it but at my grandparents house they had a bunch of dominoes and we would just like set them up and you know knock them over that's my the extent of my domino playing <laughs> and then we have a yahtzee which i think is probably just from the 90s but uh yahtzee is a big deal in john's family they play it all the time like even like every time we would go over there uh usually john and his mom would play at least one game um, so we felt like we should get it. I'm not that big of a fan of it, but I guess I could play it once in a while. And then we have one called Midlife Crisis, which I think sounds really interesting, but we <laughs> have not played it. And then a game called Go. And then next to it, um, John just found this, like, Blue Jays troll from the 90s, uh, fairly recently. So it's just down there for some reason, but... John also has um, like a set of poker chips down there. All right, so that is it for our entire board game collection. Basically, we're just keeping it to whatever will fit on this bookshelf. Um, so we do have room for a few more, but if we were to like run out of space and want to get more, we would just get rid of some, like if we never play them or we didn't really like it that much. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed a look at this. Like I mentioned earlier, I feel like uh, it's kind of a dying thing. Like kids today probably do not play board games, but when we were kids, it was kind of a big deal. And I'm sure before that, you know, cause we grew up in the era where we had video games as well, but you know, generations before that didn't have video games. So yeah, I don't know. I just think it's a fun thing to do. And I've been really enjoying finding all these vintage board games that we had never played before so i don't know it's exciting anyway i'm gonna stop rambling so thank you for watching and i will see you again soon